Um, okay, um, so welcome everyone. So this session, uh, we will talk about JDBC connectors in Tableau. Um, my name is Eric, and this is Wei, and this is Li Yun. So we are from the Tableau connectivity team, and our team is a bit, uh, basically responsible for building all the connectors in Tableau, so you must be familiar with our team's connector. So before we jump into actual content today, uh, let's take a look at some questions posted in the Tableau online forum. <clears throat> so this one asks about um, JDBC connectivity. Our organization has been eagerly awaiting for generic JDBC connection support, but we haven't been able to find any inf uh, information on the release of this support. Can anyone provide an update? Sounds f familiar to you guys? Can you? This one is actually posted in our internal wiki, and he is asking about how to use um, SAP HANA for JDBC connection in Tableau desktop on Windows platform. And we don't have an answer at that time yet. And this one is asking about, so he is trying to use EasySoft to connect to, uh, he is trying to connect to Presto connector using the EasySoft ODBC to JDBC bridge. And he is having trouble about creating the JVM. So with all these questions in mind, I hope when you walk out of this session, you will get answered for all these questions. Plus, you will have a better understanding of how JDBC works in Tableau. Second, how to use JDBC connectors in your daily work. And the third is how to tune for better JDBC performance for your connector. Okay, so today's agenda is as follows. So first, I'm going to introduce JDBC connectors in general. And the way is going to introduce about this new developed uh, connector, generic JDBC. And the leader is going to talk about the performance difference between ODBC and JDBC and how to tune for better JDBC performance. And we will leave some time for Q&A. Oh. OK, so, so in this part, I'm going to introduce, uh, I'm going to answer these four questions about JDBC connectors in Tableau. So the first one is, which connector supports JDBC in Tableau. The second one is how does JDBC work in Tableau. The third one is why do we need JDBC connector in the first place. And the last one is how to turn JDBC on in Tableau desktop and Tableau server. Okay. So first question, um, which connector supports JDBC? Actually, there are different kinds of JDBC connectors in Tableau. So the first can is um, we have one connector who only supports JDBC connector, that is uh, Amazon Athena. We also have one connector who only supports JDBC on Mac, but it uses both ODBC and JDBC on Windows, that is SAP HANA. And we have these following three connectors. We have both ODBC and JDBC connector built but, uh, uh, on our platforms, but the default one is always ODBC connection. Uh, these connectors are Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, and Presto. And last but not least, we have this new generic JDBC connector, and Wei is going to introduce more about it. So now let me give you a little background introduction about what is ODBC and what is JDBC, what's the difference between them. So JDBC is short for Java Database Connectivity. It is introduced by Sun Microsystem at 1997. And it has a constraint of mass to use uh, uh, the pro programming language Java. And it is platform independent because of the language nature of Java. And the API code is easy to read and write. On the other hand, ODBC is short for Open Database Connectivity. It is introduced by, by Microsoft at early 1990s. And it can use any language, but mostly it's C or C++. And it is mostly used in Windows platform. It has a benefit of fast performance for a large data import or export. So in short words, in Tableau, we use C++ to connect to uh, ODBC connection. But now we need to switch to, to Java to connect to JDBC connection. So let's take a look at how does JDBC work in Tableau? What is the workflow looks like? So Right here, let's say this is your um, JDBC database, like uh, SAP HANA. And here you have your JDBC driver. So this driver 
is a jar file and is usually built by your database driver vendor or uh, your database vendor or large database driver vendor like Simba or Teradata. And we have the JDBC API here. So this API is defined by, uh, by, by Oracle. It contains um, several operations you can perform on your database, like make connection, read metadata, read tuples, and so on. So for Tableau, we build the Java client code, which can use the uh, JDBC API to connect to your database through the JDBC driver you have. And then the Java client code will be compiled as a jar file, whose name is tabjdbc.jar. So the Tableau C++ code will be able to communicate with the Java side using the Java native interface. And the data passed back from Java to C++ will be serialized in protocol buffer. So this protocol buffer is something Google developed. It's a method for serializing constructor data. We used to use the JSON serializer, but we figured out the protocol buffer is much faster, so we switched the, to the faster one. And now the key question becomes, how does Tableau C++ code being able to consume the jar file? Um, so let me introduce you a process whose name is called tab protoserve. So in Tableau, every time you make a new connection, this process, tab protoserve, will be start up. It is separate from the main Tableau process, and the main reason for that is we want to separate the exceptions thrown by the third-party code, like your database or database driver, from the main Tableau code. And for JDBC, we did something more. So because this jar file contains all the bytecode that Java needs to run in some kind of a Java environment, so what we do here is inside every tab proto serve, we start a JVM, which is called Java Virtual Machine. So in this way, our little jar file can run inside the Java Virtual Machine. So there's a lot of technical terms, and you don't need to understand all of them. I only want you to get a sense of what the workflow looks like, what components is uh, in included in this workflow. OK, so, so why do we need JDBC in the first place, right? There are several concrete reasons. So the top first one is we have um, database only support JDBC. Athena is a good example. Um, Right now, Athena might have an ODBC driver. You need to check. But at the time we wrote the connector, it definitely only have the JDBC driver. Um, and we also have this SAP HANA because it only supports JDBC on Mac. And I think it's still the case. So we need to use JDBC on Mac. And the third one is we have some function limitation in ODBC connector. So Oracle SSL is a good example. And I'll discuss it in the next slide. And last but not least, we have this performance difference between ODBC and JDBC, and Lee will discuss more about it. So this slide shows what is the benefit of using um, JDBC for Oracle SSL feature. Before we use uh, Oracle JDBC, we use o uh, Oracle OCI to make connections. And if you want to use the SSL feature for Oracle, you need to add the server cert into Oracle Wallet and add many configurations for both Tableau Desktop and Tableau Server. Maybe some of you don't know what is Oracle Wallet, right? And that is very like, confusing and hard to, hard to run by a normal like, business people. But after we, if we try to use the Oracle JDBC, what you need to do is just in this connection dialog and this a uh, dialog will pop up, and you can just choose in your file system to find the correct server cert, and then upload, click that OK, and then you are ready to go. There's no more operations on Oracle Wallet or Tableau Desktop or Tableau Server. So that's, it's, that is much, much more simpler. OK, now let's take a look at how to turn on JDBC in Tableau. So before we jump into actual content, uh, I need to make some disclaimers. So first, uh, the following content is only intended for advanced users. So you should only do this if you know what you are doing. And as this, uh, as this is not officially supported by Tableau yet, 
So you should use this feature at your own risk. Okay, so let's see how to turn on JDBC in Tableau Desktop. So here, by turning on, what I mean is for these four connectors, because we support both ODBC and JDBC, and the default one is ODBC, there's a way to force Tableau to use the JDBC version of these connectors instead of the OB ODBC one. <clears throat> and the, ste the steps are really simple, just a three-step work. So first, you need to make sure you have a 64-bit JRE installed. This can be downloaded from our website. And then copy the drivers to the correct location in Windows and Mac, because we don't have a Linux desktop. And then just launch Tableau with this argument, which is dash D for JDBC. So please remember this argument is case sensitive, so just be careful with that. But let's say if you don't want to force JDBC for all these different connectors, you, like you only want a subset of them, what you can do? So there we have another argument whose name is dash D use JDBC. So this argument takes in a list of strings which is separated by comma, and each stream must correspond to the class name defined in Tableau code. So I have a list all of the four class names here. It's SAP HANA, SQL Server, Oracle, and Presto. Uh, all lowercase, no space, no dash. So let's say if you only want to uh, force JDBC for HANA and SQL Server, you just do dash D use JDBC equal to SAP HANA comma SQL Server, and that's it. So please note that the JRE version installed need to match the Java version your driver is using. So in Tableau, we use Java 8 as the default JDK version. But let's say if your JAR driver is using Java 9 or Java 10, you must make sure the first step you are installing the correct version of JRE. Okay, so how to turn on JDBC on server? It's quite, quite similar. Uh, first, make sure the JRE is correctly installed and then stop the server if it's still running. Then copy the drivers to the following two locations, driver locations, and then edit the server configuration file using the tsm command, and then start the server. That's it. Okay, now let's take a look at what is the publishing experience and how does cross platform scenario works. So let's say you as an end user is working on your Mac station on a HANA JDBC workbook, and you want to publish that to your Tableau server or Tableau online instance. So let's say if your Tableau server or online has configured to use JDBC according to the previous slide correctly, and you have installed the driver in the correct folder. So everything is the same, which means it will definitely work because you are using the same driver connecting to the same data source within the same workbook, right? But let's say if your server does not have the JDBC configured at all, and use the default ODBC one, so do you think this would still work? How many of you think this would still work? By work, I mean you can still use the, your ODBC connection to make the connection. Nobody? <laughs> okay, I saw one or two stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, no worries. So yeah, I, I, I can assure you this will still work. And, and here is the reason. So although ODBC and JDBC use different drivers, different mechanisms, but they have one thing in common, it's the connection attributes. So if you have ever seen the TWB file or TDS file in the text editor, it's actually a XML format file. And in that file, you'll find that there's a portion with tag name connection. So that portion contains all the connection attributes required to make this connection happen. So here is an example of the TWIP file. I'll zoom in a little bit. So this connection has several attributes. It has authentication, class name, DB name, server name, server OAuth, username, and so on. So that is being said, even though your Tableau server only has the ODBC driver configured correctly, it can still use this same set of attribute to connect to your database. Does that make sense, Kenneth? Cool. 
Um, also a list here, but please, please make sure uh, only view this, don't modify this. It may cause unnecessary problems. And the same thing happens. If you want to email your workbook to one of your colleagues, so no matter what their workstation is set up for, ODBC or JDBC, as long as they have one way set up correctly, they will always be able to make the connection and view your workbook. Yeah, sure. Only the one we list here because those four connectors are we developed the native connect native JDBC connector. If you are trying to connect to other data source, you need to use the GNX JDBC connector, and we will talk more about it in the next live stream session. Any other question? Okay, so here I'm going to have a little demo of using JDBC. Where's my cursor? Okay. So all these uh, material will be able to download on the website. So the first thing you need to make sure is you we have the correct driver installed in the correct folder. So for Windows, it's in Program Files, Tableau, Driver folder. So you can see we have several different jars here, and this ngdbc is a JDBC driver for SAP HANA. And then we start Tableau with this dash D force JDBC command. And then just wait a few seconds. So now let's try to make a ICP HANA connection. So this time we will, it's on the Windows uh, desktop and it's trying to use the JDBC connection of ICP HANA. Yeah, so we can connect. And right now the only way to verify we are using JDBC or ODBC is from the logs. So we will check. Uh, uh, so we'll check the desktop logs here. If you still remember the process I just introduced, it's called tab proto serve. So we need to look at the tab proto serve logs because that's what, where the connection is happening. And what we are looking for here is a JDBC connection stream. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see here we are using the JDBC protocol, and the connection URL starts with JDBC column SAP column. Uh, slash, slash, uh, slash slash HANA. And we have all the uh, connection information here. So that, that is being said, we are using the JDBC connection. And here we have also some information about what is the driver directory we are using. And this Java home is, is pointing to our uh, GRE or JDK. So we are using 1.8. And it also says what is the server version and driver version you are using. So all this being said is that we are using the actual JDBC connection of HANA. And now let's try to publish that to a ODBC server, and let's say if we can still make the connection successfully. So now let me try to make a sample workbook. And so I'm trying to publish to the local server, which is installed on my Windows desktop. And that server is not configured for JDBC at all. It, it's totally ODBC. So I'm trying to publish with uh, embedded password authentication, which means we should not need to enter our username or password at all. We should just be able to view the, work, uh, the, the actual content. And wait a few seconds. So the publish is successful. And then we should try to view the actual workbook. And a few seconds. 
There we go. So now I need to prove to you that we are actually using the ODBC way to connect, and the only way is also through the logs. But this time it's the server logs, it's not the desktop one, but it's still the type of server log. So let's just put in the logs and try to see what is the connection string we are trying to use. So it's right here. So if you can see, we are using the ODBC protocol input, and the connection stream looks nothing like a JDBC connection. It's um, totally ODBC stuff. It has driver, server node, UID, and oh, the password is here, but because it's a dev box, and in your server instance, it should, not, it should be encrypted in stars. So all this is being said, we, are, we successfully published the JDBC workbook to a ODBC server and still be able to make the connection. Right, so I have one last thing to say. So we have some future work. Um, so we plan to change the mechanism of our JDBC implementation a little bit. We plan to build this JDBC server. So this JDBC server is something that, um, if you remember correctly, how JDBC workflow looks like in Tableau, we need to start the JVM inside every tab processor process, and that tab processor process is start up whenever you make a new connection, which means whenever you make a new JDBC connection, we need to start one JVM from scratch. So this JDBC server will be start up when you start your Tableau app, not make connection. And then all the subsequent JDBC connection will reuse this JDBC server more and more times without need to creating, creating new JVMs. This would have several benefits. So first one is, we only need to start the process once instead of for each connection. And the second one is the JVM warm-up time only occur once. So the first two point will benefit for your connection time. It will significantly reduce your JDBC connection time. And the third one is reduced memory footprint. So Let's imagine if you have 100 different connections, each one has a new JVM. Let's say each JVM takes up 256 megabytes, that's like 25 gigabytes. It's a lot of memory. But in this case, we can just start one large JVM which costs like five megabyte, uh, 500 megabytes or one gigabytes, and it will still do the work correctly. All right, uh, I think that's all I have here, and let's welcome Wei to talk about the uh, New, oh, is there a question? Yeah, yeah uh, sure. So does that, does that memory get released? Does it, does it pull that memory? Uh, that, how does that work? Does it just kind of ebb and flow, or does it have a connection to the main system? You mean this uh, JDBC server? Yeah, so I'm or assuming the, that you would see in your process of like this Java .js Yes, server, correct. And then you would have some sort of a memory allocation? Yeah, so it's got released after you. So we will make new connections. It will uh, allocate more memory, but if a close connection, the, that, that kind of memory will be released. Okay. Yeah. All right, so any more questions? Okay, so let's walk, welcome away to talk about the uh, JDBC connector. Come on. Oi, oi. So, uh, thanks, Eric. Uh, my name is Wei, and uh, I'm also from Connectivity team. And in this part, I will talk about uh, generic JDBC. So, uh, as Eric mentioned, this for current Tableau, Tableau product, we only support four type of connector using support JDBC driver. So, if you want to uh, use, use Tableau, pro Tableau product to connect to more type of this source using JDBC driver, then generic JDBC is the options you can try. So um, generic GDBC is a new feature, and it will ship in 2018.3, and it will available on all platforms, Windows, Mac, and Linux. And uh, there, because there has many types of different GDBC drivers, and uh, for the first version of a generic GDBC connector, there has some driver limitations or requirements. First, you need to make sure the GDBC driver, JRFL, has read permissions for tablet product. And second, the driver better support uh, GDBC 4.0 or later versions. So if the driver is to use uh, 
uh, older version API, you may have problem to do these connections. And uh, third, the driver better be a uh, type 4 JDBC driver. Uh, type 4 JDBC driver means this driver is uh, pure Java implementations, so it's easy to import uh, across different platform. And uh, next. So uh, this is general JDBC connection dialog looks like, and user can input uh, JDBC URL and the slide dialect and uh, input username and password and uh, upload the properties files. Here, here you samples. Uh, here is the JDBC URL you samples which can be used to connect to uh, MySQL database. It starts with JDBC colon, MySQL colon, slash, slash, host name and port slash and the database name or schema name. And uh, you can set my circle or PostgreSQL or SQL 92 dialect. So you may ask what is dialect in this case? So uh, for different type of this source, they support different kind of SQL syntax. They all use SQL, but they still have some little difference. So uh, if you want to use general JDBC to connect to my circle or Google called SQL, same kind of my circle related uh, this source, you can set my circle dialect. Same thing happens for PostgreSQL. You can, uh, if you want to connect to PostgreSQL database or Amazon Redshift, you can try PostgreSQL dialect. Or if you still cannot find the right dialect for your connections, you can try SQL 92. And uh, you can input username and password. And uh, you can add your property f properties to your property file and uh, upload it, and we will pick up. And we also support TTC files. So uh, you, may, you may ask what is properties file or TDC files looks like. Here are your samples. Um, so uh, JDBC properties file is very common and very useful in JDBC world. It is, you can use it to enable or disable your SSL connections or Kerberos connections. And uh, below are examples uh, which I will use in my later demos used to uh, enable or disable SSL connections. Uh, um, you, can, you need to set use SSL equal to true to enable it and set to false to disable it. And this is TDC file. Uh, TDC file is uh, well used for in tablet world. It is powered by tablet, tablet product. And uh, if you want to drag a JDBC to connect to, to, to pick up the TDC file, you need to make sure uh, put the TDC file in the data source folder. And you need to set the class name equal, class equal to drag a JDBC and you need to set a driver name equal to sub-protocol part. So you may ask what is sub-protocol sub, sub is. So here is examples. If the JDBC URL is the JDBC column, my circle column, slash, slash, examples, then sub-protocol sub is the part between two columns. So in this case, the my circle is the sub-protocol. So you need to set a driver name equal to my circle. So we will pick, it, so, so we will pick this TDC file up when you want to use general JDBC to connect to my SQL database. And uh, so if you want to publish a general JDBC workbook or data source to the Tableau server, you need to uh, make sure the Tableau server install the right JDBC driver. ODBC will not work. And the same thing, if you want to share the workbook or data source with your teammates, uh, they all need to make sure install the right JDBC drivers, so ODBC will not work. Okay, a demo. So in this demo, I will use, I will try to use general JDBC to connect to my circle and the near 4G. Okay, uh, I've already installed uh, my circle database in my local machine, and this is my circle workbench. Let's take a look at my circle database first. So I need input password. And I've already created a test v sch schema here and import three tables here. And uh, let's take a look at server status first. So you can see here it is SSL available, it's on, which means all the connections trying to connect to this MySQL database, they will use SSL connections by default. Okay, let's close this one and go back to Tableau Desktop. Oops. Let's 
So uh, in this demo, I will select, I will use Turbo Desktop 2018.3 to do this demo. And before that, I need to use Wireshark to verify the SSL connection is enabled or not. So by default, they will, it will use SSL. So which means if I start capturing the package for that related to SSL package, it will capture something here. So let's start connections. Select our database JDBC. So this is connection a dialog for the general JDBC and uh, the URL which can use for uh, connect to my circle database is JDBC colon my circle colon slash slash localhost and port and uh, test v1. Test v1 is the schema I create for this test, for these demos and set my circle dialect and the username and the password. And uh, click sign and go back to Wireshark and uh, you can see here it captures some SSL related package. So which means SSL connection is default, uh, is enabled by default. And go back to tablet desktop and then you can select database and select tables and select some attributes. Okay, so next step I will use property file to disable SSL connections. So let's restart a well shark to verify this is disabled or not. So I will restart the Wireshark and uh, let's take a look at property file I will use in these demos. Oh, this is for a new project. Uh, I should just let this one. So this is my circle property file I will use to disable SSL connections. So you need to set use SSL equal to false to disable it. And uh, let's restart a tablet desktop again. Same version. And start our database GDBC. And the URL is same, data is same, username and password is same. And uh, the only difference is you need to uh, upload the property files. This is my circle properties and the stat and click sign. So let's go back to Wireshark. You can see it is empty. So which means SSL connection is disabled uh, by these public files. And uh, next, I will show how to use generic JDBC to connect to a near 4 j database. So I've already started a near 4 j database in my local machine. and. Uh, Let's take a brief look, look like near 4 first. Password, click sign. Oops, sorry. And uh, this is near 4 j and uh, near 4 j is not a typical rational database. It is a graph database. It did not support SQL syntax. It only support his own cyber query language. It is a non-circle. So it did not have the schema, database, or table, this, this kind of de definitions. It only has a uh, node or relations, shape, or properties. Let's, take, let's click some proper node to take a look what it looks like. So after I click the product, it shows some node here. So this is basic uh, Neo4j database and uh, I will use uh, TDC files to customize my connections to connect to this database, uh, to connect to Neo4j database. So this is generic JDBC Neo4j TDC file, and uh, you need to set the class equal to generic JDBC and uh, the Java name, Java name equal to Neo4j. And uh, you need to set these three capabilities to disable the emerge table, emerge schema, and emerge database, because, they, because Neo4j didn't support that, so said to yes. And uh, because it did not support SQL syntax, so I need to 
uh, enable customer circle dialogue so user can input the cyber query language. And, uh, and it only can do extract only. It cannot do uh, live connections because Tableau couldn't, Tableau couldn't didn't support as uh, non-circle language. So you need to set another locality is cap customer non-circle to yes. And uh, let's start Tableau Desktop to do these connections. So in this demo, because some capabilities is introduced up to 2018 DOS versions, so I will select a developer versions to do these demos. So I set the table desktop near. And the set other database, JDBC. And this is connection dialog, and the URL is JDBC column near 4G column both slash slash the host. And because we did not do live connections, so that is not, is not so useful in this case. I will start uh, circle 92 and username and password. And click sign in. So as you can see here, in this side, there's no schema, no, no database, no tables. So you only can see the new customer circle buttons, double click it, and, uh, and uh, let's try run some cyber, cyber query. So in this demo, I will run this cyber query. I will run this query at near 4 g database first to check what is written. So copy paste here and execute. So it will return three columns, uh, product name and the quantity per unit and the unit price. So I will run the same queries at Tableau Desktop, copy paste and click OK. And you can see here, we got three columns here and uh, it shows action only. Here. So let's set some attribute, product name, and unit, and unit price. OK, so this is a demo for today. And next, welcome uh, Living to, to talk about performance between ODBC and GDBC. But no, I don't have. No. I haven't tested. Okay. So, other questions? Oh no. Actually, we have Q and A sessions after, uh, and if you have any question, you can always ask. Okay, thanks, Eric and Wei. I'm Li Yun. I'm also come from Connectivity Team. After we understand what Tableau JDBC is and how it works, let's take a look at the performance. Um, as we know, for, uh, for some data sources like uh, Oracle and SAP HANA, Tableau supports connecting to them with either JDBC and ODBC. So in this case, which protocol should we use in order to get a better performance? And the second question is, if you are already using JDBC, is there a way to make it run faster? In order to answer these two questions, we did performance tests to evaluate the JDBC and ODBC's performance. And in our, tar uh, our target databases are Athena, Redshift, Oracle, Presto, and SAP HANA. And our test scenario is to connect to the database with JDBC and ODBC and compare the running time 
of extracting different rows of number from database. Okay, the first question, JDBC versus ODBC, which one is faster? This is our first group, Athena and Redshift. In this group, both of them have the JDBC run faster than the ODBC. Let's take a look at the test result. And in the chart, the X axis represents the running time, uh, sorry, uh, represents the row number, and the Y axis represents the extracting time. And the red bar in the chart represents the JDBC extracting time. And the blue bar represents the ODBC extracting time. We can see that for Athena, when we are extracting 5 million rows of number from database, the JDBC is 13% faster than the ODBC. For the Redshift, when we are extracting 2 million rows of number from database, the JDBC is three times faster than the ODBC. So if you are working on Athena or Redshift, and if you want to get a better performance, you can consider using JDBC. And this is our second group, Oracle and Presto. In this group, both of them have the ODBC run faster than the JDBC. Let's take a look at the test result. And the first is Oracle. When we are extracting 5 million rows of data from database, the ODBC is 10 times faster than the JDBC. So it looks like the JDBC's performance is much slower than the ODBC. We'll discuss later on how to improve the Oracle JDBC performance in our next part. And for Presto, when we are uh, extracting 5 million rows of data from database, the ODBC is 2.5 times faster than the JDBC. So if you are working on the Oracle or Presto, you can consider using ODBC to get a better performance. And this is our third group, SAP HANA. In our test, we noticed that when the row number is smaller than 100,000, the ODBC's performance is slightly better than the JDBC. When the row number is larger than that, the JDBC is faster. So if you are working on the large data set on uh, SAP HANA, you can consider using JDBC to get a better performance. So the next question, how to make your JDBC run faster? In our previous test, we connect to the database with default uh, connection setting, meaning uh, when we connect to the database, we didn't do any customization. But some JDBC driver provide an important property called JDBC fetch size. We can customize its value to improve your JDBC performance. So what is JDBC fetch size? The JDBC fetch size uh, is used to determine how many rows of data the driver will fetch at a time from the database. When we increase its value, it will make fewer run trips to the database so we can improve the fetching performance. Our test scenario is to uh, connect to the database with different JDBC fetch size and compare the running time of extracting different rows of number from database. Let's take a look at the test result. In the chart, the x-axis uh, represents the row number and the y-axis represents the extracting time. And the uh, red line here represents the extracting time when we connect to Oracle with the default JDBC fetch size. For Oracle, the default fetch size is 10. And the blue line here at the bottom is the extracting time when we connect to the database with 100 JDBC fetch size. We can see that when we increase the fetch size from 10 to 100, the performance improve a lot. In the case of extracting 5 million rows of data from database, the 100 JDBC's performance is almost 10 times faster than the default one. But does this mean 
we should increase the JDBC batch size as large as possible. Not exactly. Let's take a look at the test result again. And in the chart, the orange line here represents the uh, 1,000 JDBC batch size extracting time. The yellow line here represents the 5,000 JDBC batch size extracting time. And the green line here represents the 10,000 JDBC batch size extracting time. We can see that for these three, their performance are quite similar. The largest batch size, which is the green line here, does not have a better performance than the others. So why this happen? The most possible reason for that is when we increase the JDBC fetch size, the communication protocol like the TCP IP needs to weigh a lot and handle more data at a time. But the peak data transfer might be slowed down by the hardware limits. So there should be an optimal value there. Then any value below this or above this will be slower. The next part is how to set the JDBC batch size in Tableau. Before we do that, we have to make sure the JDBC driver support this setting. And this is the database list which support setting the JDBC batch size as the connection properties. If you are using the name connector, you can customize the JDBC batch size in the property file like this, then put a the property file under the data sources folder. And if you are using the generic JDBC, there are two ways to do that. The first way is to customize the batch size in the connection URL like this. And the other way is to set uh, in the property file and upload the property file in the connection dialog. Next, I will go into demo how to tune the Oracle JDBC performance with JDBC fetch size. Let me maximize this. Okay. Here I will open two tableaus. Uh, the left tableau, I will connect to Oracle with the default JDBC fetch size. The right tableau here, I will connect with the 100 JDBC fetch size. Then I will compare the uh, running time of extracting the same number of rows from database. Let's get started. First, I will connect to the left tableau with the default JDBC fetch size. I input the username, password, and click sign in. Then I need to select the database and select the table. Okay. Then I will select, uh, I will set up the connection in the right tableau. Here I will upload the property file. And in this property file, I will customize the JDBC batch size as 100. Here, I have to make sure the batch size is 100 here. Then we can Click open and upload this property file and click sign in. Then I will select the same database and the same table. So at this time, both tableaus uh, have the connection set up. The next thing I'm going to do is to extract the same size so Data, uh, data set from the database and compare the running time. We will start from the, from the default, one, default one. First, I will open the start the performance recording tool and extract the data. Here, I'm going to extract the 
200,000 rows from database. Okay, it is running now. Then I will do the same thing on the right. Extract the same number of rows from, from database. Okay, right now both Tableau are doing the extracting, so we can see how long does it take. Okay, it looks like the right Tableau already finished. We are going to stop the performance recording tool and see how long does it take. Let's check the number. Here, we can see that uh, for the 100 uh, JDBC fetch size extracting time is 16 seconds. The left tableau with the default JDBC fetch size is still running. We can wait a few more seconds and see how long does it take. It looks like it is pretty, it is much slower than the, than the right tableau. Okay, it seems like you already finished too. Let's stop the performance recording tool and see how long does it take. Okay, let's check the number. Here, for the default JDBC fetch size, uh, the total extracting time is 18 seconds. So we can see that when we increase the JDBC fetch size from 10 to 100, and the Oracle JDBC performance improve about five times when we are extracting 200,000 rows from database. And you can also use this way to tune your, Oracle, uh, tune your JDBC performance for your database. Um, thank you. This is all I have today. Um, let me see. And we also. We also have the survey, and please help us to complete this survey in your TC18 app. And next is the Q&A section. If you have any questions for Eric, Wei, or me, please do not hesitate to ask. We are happy to help. Yeah. Yes. Already available. Um, turned off. Um, sorry, I don't remember the exact uh, version, but right now, what, what version are you using? Are you using 10.5? Ten, ten yeah, I think 20.1 definitely have that one. 10.5, yeah, 10.5 should also have this one, yeah. Okay. To where they can schedule it on the server. Okay, yeah. So I can just tell my desktop server that I'm still connected to the mom and Yes. Try that. Uh -huh. Does it work? But if I were to push it to the server, is every single SAP Harmony connection going to go through JDBC? Mm -hmm. um, it depends on how do you set up your server. So like I said, if your server is configured to use JDBC connection for HANA, it will go through JDBC. But if it do not do anything, it's or DBC. Right, but I need the C. So, so then I have to make it JDBC yeah, work. Yeah. And it means that everybody right, can right, 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 correct. JDBC. Yeah, you can do that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? All right, thank you guys. Um, yeah, we'll still continue. Yeah.